Okay, let's see how long I can record before my dogs start knocking me out of the chair because they want my attention over you. I'm having comments on my videos again. Where are you? What are you doing? Why are you only putting out Stitch Fix videos? Let's just uh, cut down to the chase about where I've been and why I haven't been putting out videos. First of all, guys, it's the beginning of the school year and that is just incredibly hectic. You know, I'm the cheer coach and we practice every day, except for Wednesdays. And then we have games on Fridays and I'm usually working on Saturday or just, to be quite honest, sitting. Sitting is something I do not get to do very often. But I wanted to give you an idea of what is going on in my life. I've always heard that bad things happen in threes and uh, Lee fussed at me the other day because I said I was waiting on that third thing and she said that I was speaking it into existence and she's right that's my favorite saying don't speak it into existence or I'm gonna speak this into existence about the last week in July first week of August which is the beginning of my in-service week my birthday and that was real busy I had a lot of stuff going on and that's always fun and then the day after my mom found out that she has breast cancer she has the exact same kind of breast cancer I had seven years ago and except hers is invasive which if you are unfamiliar with the terminology Invasive ductal carcinoma is breast cancer of the milk ducts that has spread out to the fatty tissue around the ducts. Mine was ductal carcinoma in situ, which means it was contained. My tumor was bigger, so um, they went ahead and did a bilateral mastectomy on me. Mother has a very small tumor. It's really a if you can get a good diagnosis of you have cancer, she's got it. Her tumor is small. She is not positive for the cancer gene like I am. And they gave her the option of a partial mastectomy, which in the olden days they called that a lumpectomy and radiation. Y'all know me, I'm like, uh-uh. We're cutting both of those off because I've not met a person and I know there are going to be people who prove me wrong and say I did and if this is the case then praise Jesus I'm so happy for you. Personally I have never met someone who had a lumpectomy and radiation or even one uh, a unilateral which means only one breast removed that the cancer did not come back and my loved ones cancers came back and then they died. So I'm really proactive and let's get those suckers off. She went to my oncologist, my daddy's oncologist, daddy and I were both there, and he said, listen, when I told you you had cancer, I said, you don't have an option, we're doing bilateral. If I felt like that your mother needed to have a bilateral mastectomy, then I would say so. I really think that she's gonna be great with a partial and radiation. So, because I trusted him with my life, he saved my daddy's life. Daddy had stage four, and it was everywhere, and it came back and was stage four again, and he beat it again with Dr. Tower's help. We trust him. So, we went home that first week of August and said, this is what we're going to do. And, of course, he told mother, he said, this is your choice. It's your body. Fast forward a couple of weeks ago, and she calls me into her office and says, what do you really think? And I said, Mama, this is not up to me. This is what you want to do. And she feels like she wants to have a bilateral mastectomy, which is having both breasts removed. I don't think she'll have to have radiation if she does that. If so, great. They may still want to do that. I don't know. So that decision was made. She went to her surgeon today. It was the first doctor appointment that I did not attend because I know I'll have to miss a lot when she has her mastectomy and her reconstruction because that is hell, period. And I will have to be there to help take care of her. 
So that is reason number one. I have other things to think about. Next, my first cousin took his own life last week. He was only 19 and we were all shocked. He was always jolly, always. A knucklehead is what his daddy called him. You know, constantly going and doing, hunting, fishing. He had a girlfriend. He worked um, at a factory, the same factory that his mother works in. And Wednesday, a week ago Wednesday, I was called out of a meeting at school <clears throat> by the two SROs, one at the high school, one at my school and to let me know that that happened and they were supposed to take me to uh, where my family was. My cousin and my aunt are the ones who found him on the side of the road. He had gone down to the bottoms near the river fishing. They were fishing. He went down there to take care of business and they drove up on it. And my aunt said, that looks like Tubbs truck. So my cousin who is a seven year, seven tour Airborne Army Ranger vet. He has had 18 of his boys to take their own lives once they got back from tours. He's well versed. And he said as he pulled even towards the truck, he recognized the scene and backed up, had his son get in the floorboard so he could go check it out. And he told his mother, do not get out of the truck. So my daddy had to call Tubbs dad and tell him that his son had passed away of his own hand and then my mom and daddy went to my aunt's work and let her know so it, it has been that it was an absolutely terrible heart-wrenching shocking few days and where I think we're still in shock is his poor parents his poor parents and to see him and see his wife just absolute mess the second reason why YouTube was just not on my list of things to do and then Sunday was a day I thought I'm gonna film a video I might even do a live stream I went to church then went to mom and daddy's house and had lunch and then I was, I came home and to be quite honest, Justin Timberlake was singing on my radio and I love that song. So I made the block so I could hear the song. <laughs> I know how dumb that sounds. I enjoy my life. I enjoy music and I enjoy, you know, the little thing. So I was enjoying that song. And as I was coming down the street that runs parallel to mine, a little boy, one of my former students ran his bicycle into the side of my car. At the time, I had no idea. He came out of nowhere. I was driving and I see this flash of white come at me like this. And then my car did this and I heard a bam. So I thought, what? And I threw on the brakes. I looked in my side mirror, but mine are the foldable kinds. It was bent in, folded in. So I knew something had hit me. I knew I couldn't have hit him, whatever it was, because I'm driving, there's nothing in the road. So I looked in the rearview mirror and there I saw one of my former ch children rolling down the road, uh, his bicycle being flipping behind him. You can imagine what my reaction was. I just went bananas. I ran to him. Uh, he's screaming, holding his abdomen. So I'm, you know, sitting down. I looked at his shirt. There was a little scratch and a little bruise and under, like on the underside of his little belly. And so I'm immediately thinking internal injuries. This man, he was one of my back neighbors 
Sorry, this light is awful. But, man, that might be better. I don't know. I have to just go where the light is at this time of day. Said, someone yelled, what happened? Because I'm crying, the little boy is crying, and he said, in all of his infinite wisdom and intelligence and class, she hit him with her effing car. That's what happened. So then I just lose it. I'm crying so hard. I'm crying like you would cry over a broken heart when you're by yourself. You know, when no one's there and you can just ugly cry. I'm ugly crying. The little boy's ugly crying. But he's standing up. And um, I said, call 911. So they called the police. And the man said, do we need ambulance? I said, yes. But then he was like, well, he's standing up talking. He kind of calmed down because he saw I was an absolute wreck. I'm usually really good in states of emergency. I'm the one who has in the past kept a level head. Not this time. So he says a child has been hit by a car. So, you know, my little town, two, three police cars, ambulance, emergency, side-by-side, -side, emergency, truck. They all fly up because it's right here in town. And when they see the little boy that he's standing up talking and they said, what happened? He said, I don't have brakes on this bike. I couldn't stop. So he was coming in hot from the side and then saw me and couldn't stop and ran into my car and then his handlebars went all the way down my car and got in his belly. So I know that is just like, once again, the best case scenario, if you have to collide with the child on a bike and you're in a car, that's the best thing that could happen. But I could not, my hands were shaking like this, the scariest moment of my life. And He's not crying anymore, but I am still ugly crying. So the emergency people start talking to me about hyperventilating and they're like, it's okay, he's okay. He and his brothers and sisters play on the road all the time. And the um, tactful guy from the beginning said, you know what, this is why I tell y'all to stay out of the road all the time. He's just a neighbor. Because he has an artificial leg from getting hit by a car when he was in the road. And I don't know the story about that. And he said, so all the police were fussing at this point at the little boy because every single day they have to fuss at the brothers and this little boy about getting out of the road with their bicycles. And I just kept apologizing. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. The EMTs did not take him to the hospital because he's obviously okay. Um, his dad's like coming over. He's okay. He's okay. Pat me. So they drive me home. I go get in an Epsom salt bath and get a glass of wine and cry for another hour. And then the police, come, they came back by to check on me. They had gone by, back by to check on him. He was fine. The dad said, we're just concerned about Miss Shauna. Is she okay? <laughs> and then I thought, I mean, no, I'm not okay. I hit your child with my vehicle. And then I looked at myself in the mirror and, you know, mascara, snot, hairs all over my head. Oh, and in the meantime, a wonderful little lady said, let me move your car out of the road. And she comes back and said, are these your shoes? I had run out of my shoes. This poor baby, traumatized, when his daddy walked up, he said, Daddy, I've been hit by a car. It was terrible. He was at school Monday or Tuesday after Labor Day. And his brother told everyone at school that Miss Shauna ran over his brother because I was doing 50 miles an hour and I didn't stop to check on him. Gotta love kids. The parents are fine. Mama's got cancer. My cousin passed away at 19. And then I collided with a child with my car. I've been saying I hit a child with my car, but people keep, but the police said, do not say that you did not do it. You are not at fault. I have the police report to prove it. It still was traumatic. So that stitch fix box that I've had in there for several days, unopened. I haven't even looked at it. I've got all kinds of video ideas, not important to me. 
maybe everything will calm down. But I felt like I needed to explain why I've just been barely throwing out a video every couple of weeks. And um, there you have it. <laughs> Thank you for listening. I appreciate you those of you who've been sending me Instagram messages and commenting on my Instagram pictures and commenting on my old videos saying, where the heck are you? Come back. It makes me feel good. Other than those three enormous uh, incidents, life is good and things are going well. Uh, but I just stay very busy. All right. I love ya. And now I'm about to go make a Stitch Fix video since I have about 30 minutes before I have to go to cheer practice and take my girls to boxing class. So, um, I'll see you next time. I'll see you in just a few minutes. I love you. Bye.